Hey Pascal here, nice to see you again on my channel and one big problem that you probably have as a travel video creator is the video editing part, especially if you travel a lot so you need to edit on the go and you're forced to use a laptop because laptops are always a bit weaker than desktop computers and that's why it's important to use a specific video editing workflow so that you maximize the editing speed and that's what we're talking about today. So at first, if you want to get into 4K video editing, you should definitely invest in a proper laptop, in a good one. I would strongly recommend to use a MacBook together with Final Cut Pro 10 in that case, simply because it's the fastest video editing solution out there right now. Of course, you can use Premiere and so on, but Premiere and also DaVinci is not as fast as Final Cut Pro 10. DaVinci comes pretty close, um, but especially Premiere is far away from that. And that's also the reason why so many people cut on MacBooks. I know MacBooks are a bit more expensive, at least in the beginning, but it's definitely worth getting into that system. But of course, if you can't afford that, it's not a big deal at all. You don't necessarily need to edit in 4K. You can do it in 1080 and also if you have a bit weaker laptop, you can use a feature called Proxy, Proxy Media, and I will show you now shortly how to do that, just to mention that here if you cut on a bit weaker laptop. So I'm in Final Cut Pro 10 here right now. So if you use a MacBook Air or MacBook 12 inch, then that is for you. But you can also use proxy media files in Adobe Premiere and I also think in Resolve. So you shouldn't have a problem doing that in other software, but I show it to you here in Final Cut Pro 10. So what you can do before you even insert your media files is you go to the settings and then under import you find um, create proxy media files. You can also do optimized media then it creates ProRes files which is also good but they are not as good for slow laptops as proxy files. The important thing then is that while you edit you need to set your quality to proxy and before you export it then you need to set it back to optimized or original. Sorry it's in German language here right now I hope my translations are good enough for you. So and let's say you have the problem that you already inserted all your footage into the timeline and then you want to switch to proxy files. What you can also do is you simply click on the, your clips here in the media library and then you do a right click and you go to transcode media and then you can click on create proxy files. It does the same thing as if you do it in the settings and it does it on import but just afterwards so maybe if you forgot to do the settings before. So that's just a little tip here to make sure that even on slower MacBooks or laptops you also get a good performance but what's even better is that you can actually optimize your workflow and that's the main topic of the video today so that you always have the best performance possible right now. So the way how I do it is I first make the basic cut of my video so that I don't have, like as you can see, I will play that now. So you saw it's just a basic cut, I didn't do any color corrections or so on. What I already insert while I'm doing that is the transitions for example, but even there sometimes, especially when I add motion blur and so on, then it gets a bit laggy and in that case I first insert the plugin for the motion blur and then I deactivate it so before rendering later I have to come back to that clip and render it again. But at this stage I only do cutting and transitions, I don't do color correction, I don't do sound design, I don't do anything like that. And that's the next step. The next step is to add sound to the sound design. I actually did a video about that. I will just link it in the description and also um, let it blend in here via the YouTube cards. And there you can see it a bit more in depth, but just to give you a short impression how it works, you, I usually go to this sound effects library from Final Cut. Then let's say here is a bit of nature stuff. So let's add some day sound effects, maybe country day. 
think I will change it later but just so that you can see how I do it I insert the sound here so in that case I could make it a little bit louder I'm clicking on that sound icon and add a bit decibels there you have it the sound doesn't really fit right now but just for you to see how I do it so this is the second stage I add all my sounds in the complete video to make it sound a bit nicer and after that I do my color correction and of course there are multiple ways I also did a video about that how you can do it only in Final Cut without using plugins I will also link the video here um, but of course there are other ways for example if you have a bit more money to spend then you could also go for film convert this is pretty cool you find it here on the film emulation and then uh, where is it now here so and then you can simply choose your camera that you used and the picture profile in my case we lock L here and then it does that but I don't use film convert so much at the moment and that is simply because it always has a very strong curve and especially in vlog L sometimes it just lose some details somewhere and I don't really like that it's, uh, I just can't see it anymore properly so at the moment I also do color correction completely without any plugins and it works quite good so just watch the video that I did before to see my um, color correction process or color grading process so let's just color correct one little clip here to show you how I do it I first go on the information setting changed a bit from the original video that I did because it has some advantages and then I go to uh, extend it and there I can set the camera a lot and I use the Panasonic VLOG lock here so to get get it from vlog to a rec 709 color space you can already see what it does here it looks a lot better already but it gets also pretty strong i think i actually don't have to do so much here so with my video scopes i see that the blacks are black and the white areas are also 100 percent white so i actually would say i could lift the midtones a little bit to make the details in the midtones appear a bit more maybe lowering the shadows i oh, know it's not good and i would actually say it already has enough saturation and then what i usually do i add a small s curve i think in that clip it won't do so much but in other clips this s curves works pretty good and then I basically add one of my own created LUTs. I created this LUT in Affinity Photo. You can also do that in Photoshop or with a plugin called Color Finale. Um, I used Affinity Photo for that and that worked pretty good. Let's try it here, like this orange and teal colors. Like mentioned before, like this LUT doesn't do so much for that clip here right now because Apart from that orange sun, there are not so many colors in there, but that's my usually color process, how I do it. And after that, you're done. So the first step is to do your basic cutting and transitions. The second step is to do sound design and then you do color grading. And the reason why I use this workflow is simply that at first, because I don't have any color corrections, I don't have any like crazy effects or like sound design edit, it only has to process the video itself and that's actually not that complicated for a modern laptop anymore, it's basically just playing the videos and cutting at a specific time, nothing else. And then in the second step comes the audio and audio is also not that, that hard to do for a computer as long as you don't do crazy audio effects but in, in there it's, it's the same it's just playing the audio to the video file so that's also that doesn't need much power from your laptop so it's a good second step and then in the last step there comes the color correction and there I sometimes go a bit crazier and then I also usually turn some other plugins on like some special effects and so on that I want to add and then you can really see that it starts lagging it gets slower and slower all the time and that's why this color correction and like how the special effects should be the last thing that you add so that you have a smooth video editing experience at the beginning and so you keep all the hard stuff 
for the last part. Of course, after that there comes rendering and then you're done with the final video. So I hope you like this little tutorial here and it could help you a little bit with cutting on the go when you only have a laptop available. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges when you travel a lot, but it's definitely possible today, especially with the newer MacBooks I recommend you. If you want to get a MacBook, get one after 2017, because that also can decode HEVC compressed videos hardware wise. So let's say you film with a GoPro Hero 7 and you do a lot of, of HEVC video or with a Mavic 2 Pro that I have with a 10-bit HEVC, then it can all be played smoothly directly on the MacBook without having to convert anything. And that also saves a lot of time. But apart from that, especially if you use proxy files, a slower MacBook or a slower laptop in general would also work. So how did you like this tutorial? Please leave it in the comments below. And also if you have any other questions, feel free to to ask I do my very best to answer as soon as possible and I'm actually on a 30-day challenge right now so I publish one video per day on this channel so don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification button right now so that you don't miss out the upcoming videos see you tomorrow